it's been a while since I uploaded a, a video. Um, again, none of these videos are monetized, but um, I wanted to react to something that I saw recently in regards to affirmative action, how um, ABC did like a short um, 30 second segment about, um, you know, I would say interrogating, but interviewing these two Hispanic brothers, you know, a college campus president for Baruch and also Fordham University and talking about like, oh, how um, maybe we're moving um, affirmative action, you know, just discussing whether um, affirmative action is still needed during this day and time. Um, while some folks said they do want it to re be removed because they they have they did want to be able to prove that they deserve a seat at the um, college or university regardless of their race um, because at the end of the day they feel like the college is letting them in not based on merit but more so on uh, filling a quota for um, this whole um, diversity agenda that the campus has um, and then um, uh, you know, talking about different strategies on, you know, navigating around the affirmative action in ways you could still diversify the pool of students you have on, um, yeah, as the institution without, you know, compromising or making them feel less than, you know, what it is. Now, my thoughts on that is, I think affirmative action is still well needed. Um, though, but I think more so the issue of getting into a brand name college, certainly like Fordham, Columbia, and things like that, rather than, you know, using a diversity quota or affirmative action as a way of allowing students to come in, uh, whether or not they have scholarship or not, um, I think I think it's time to reevaluate um, how they look at applications that come in and maybe also making it more affordable so people can actually apply to those colleges. A lot of the time, you know, coming from a working class family or a low income class family, don't really, we don't really think about applying to name brand colleges. Um, first of all, it's very competitive to get a scholarship and those are far and few in between. Um, secondly, you know, if you don't get it, you know, if you get in, but you don't have the scholarship, it's still, uh, you know, to pay per year is astronomical. You have to take out a lot of loans. And that's where people would go into student loan debt. You know, they're sold this dream that, oh, you know, by going into a private college, you know, by going into this and that, doing whatever you want, pursue your dreams, blah, 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 um, that, you know, it will pay off in the end. Um, and I have heard many, many stories how that does not pan out at all. Um, they would come into the market with low paying jobs and they would have to work at it for a few, quite a few years, still living with their parents, still you know, making ends meet, uh, making ends meet. So it speaks, you know, seeing the consequences of going to these colleges and the effects on these um, folks that are from a lower income background, you can kind of see why they are more adverse to applying to and going there. Um, I would say, yeah, if they make it more affordable, um, you know, and still base it on merit and everything else, I think um, generally there will be a better, you know, more, it will funnel more uh, students of color in, onto their campuses, right? Um, which is why, like, I'm a big proponent of, you know, deflating the um, college administration um, because sometimes they create these positions that aren't really needed on the higher up, um, you know, kind of guaranteeing or, you know, incentivizing 
certain um, college professors that are rated really well through ratemyprofessor.com or through, you know, surveys and feedbacks from students um, to, you know, to provide them with uh, funding to expand their research, expand their hours of, you know, quality teaching and stuff and provide them with also, um, you know, professional development on how to engage in effective teaching techniques, you know. Professors, a lot of times they go to college campuses and they teach, but they don't give a shit about their students. They're there really just to do their research and get funding towards that research. And that funding part of it also goes to the college campus, um, you know, to also um, go towards these administrative costs. Now, uh, because of that attitude, some professors are on campus mainly for that and they don't really give a shit if they're providing a quality education or not. And that speaks a lot. Um, and also, uh, you know, then what's the point of having administrative, uh, an inflated administrative number if what is happening is not actually conducive to a student's education? Um, uh, so there's a lot of things to think about, but I think, um, you know, yeah, some folks said that you don't really need to go to college, but when we're constantly, and even in school, we're constantly sold this dream and if anything, we're also, uh, I hate to say it, but we're kind of mind controlled in schools to think of college as, you know, a milestone in our life that we need to do it in order to be successful, then that's another issue to discuss. Like, um, you know, technical schools aren't really being promoted. I didn't even know that there was such, even with all the ads around it's like it never clicked to me like oh you know that's that's not the job for a successful even my family culturally speaking they don't they wouldn't want me to be a plumber even though they make a lot of money or electrician just because you know it's it's looked down upon culturally as well as society wise like um going to a neighboring college is like oh it comes with a name comes with an alumni network you know it comes with a lot of opportunities but you know at what cost and even then it does not necessarily pay off you know people can go into law school get saddled with you know four hundred fifty five hundred thousand dollar debt um student loan debt at that and they were sold the dream that oh you know coming out of college you would make six figure that is not true um a lot of lawyers do you know come out you know they might have to start as a paralegal and then work their way up some some do get paid maybe in the 80k but you know in comparison to what they were sold it certainly is not a lot um, and then the interest rate is horrible right now, um, especially uh, with inflation. I can only imagine it's just so much worse. Um, if there's some way to decrease the amount, you know, s solving the student loan problem is obviously more complex, but I say lower the amount of interest rate um, for student loans to maybe like 1.5%. Um, you know, enforcing college campuses, regardless of private or public, to lower the tuition costs. Or if they, you know, um, and then um, in general, um, stop overselling the dream that um, college is the way to success. Um, there's many conduits to do, to do it. Um, and make that, a, you know, a priority um, in high school education, along with, you know, teaching them economic finance, um, home economics, and things like that. So they are prepared in life, um, rather than just, you know, coming out to the workforce with like, hey, uh, I got a degree from Columbia, I'm going to do great stuff. So yeah, don't oversell it. And um, and right now, what we really need is student loan forgiveness. Um, we need to find a way to make it a clean slate so everybody can 
go back to ground zero and stop spending money on military industrial complex, US.